Hello again everyone, Tim here from timscomputerfix.net. We're going to get right down to business here. I'm going to be replacing a power jack on this MSI GT735 laptop model MS-1721. This is a power jack replacement. Now I'll tell you, I have never yet come across a laptop that has as many screws as this laptop does as you tear down the several layers to get to this power jack. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to show you here what to watch out for. And as usual we'll start off by removing our battery and then we have our back panels to to be removed. One of them exposes the hard drive. So we'll just pull that out Pull out our hard drive, remove that. Now we'll be removing the screws that hold back the very large back panel that exposes part of the motherboard, the memory, wireless card. There's a few screws here to take out. There's one right underneath this sticker that says warranty void if removed. But this laptop is a, you know, an older model laptop. Still good for, for, for what it has. This, this laptop supports an AMD Turion uh, Ultra Dual Core. So it's a dual core processor, AMD. It's also got its own video card, ATI Radeon 3850. So uh, it's a bit aged, but it's still got some life left in it. And we do have power jack issues here. So here comes the memory we're taking out. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the CPU fan. And this is also the video card heatsink fan combined so we'll just remove this fan taking care of the uh taking note of where the wires are running here this is another thing about this laptop the wires are, are routed um, kind of different from other model laptops it's kind of unique so pay very close attention to this see here how these wires are are routed around the fan next are the four screws holding down the heat sink that's cooling the video card and notice how I'm taking and loosening these screws up in the corners opposite. It's the best way to to prevent uneven pressure on the, the chip. So we'll slowly just ease this up and pull it right out. That exposes the graphics processor and then there's some screws holding this down get a little bit of a closer look there's a couple screws here that that are holding this video card into place so we'll remove those and then the video card will just kind of pop up on one end nice and gentle and then we can slide it out Next, we do the same for the processor heat sink. Loosening each screw opposite each other a little at a time until they're all loose. So we can slowly pull up our processor heat sink and remove it. Okay, now we're looking at the wireless card. We'll just remove the wires going to that. Pops right off. Remove the screw holding the card down. That flips up and we'll just remove the card. Okay, we have another card over here. We're gonna take out two screws. We're gonna remove it. That slides right out like so. And it's got a small wire attached to it. We'll pull that off. 
unplug it like so and now we have another small PCB here that we will remove it has a small antenna wire connected to it and we'll just detach all wires from it and it is it is loose and ready to come out we'll get out that out a little later so what we have here is our little plastic protective insert for our memory card reader we'll go ahead and remove it just kind of press it in and it'll snap it comes right out there you go okay we have another one here right next to it a bigger one kind of pry it out pull it out and that's out okay next I'm really going to start to pay attention to how these wires are routed where they come up through the board what holes they come up through and where they are in relation to the to the inside of the lid here here we have a video cable we have some antenna wires here uh, several different other wires and and they're all routed in specific areas so and then we have some smaller uh, plugs here that are plugged into the board for various for various things so we just pay attention to where those are unplugged from and where those wires are routed take pictures definitely I would on this particular job because it can get a little complicated so we have some tabs underneath here that hold on the the button board that we just have to kind of release using something like a screwdriver or something to kind of pull those tabs out and then our button board now becomes free from the top so we'll kind of pry it up being careful and up it comes pull it up and it's a little tough here don't want to break any tabs take your time and we'll pull it right on up still a little stuck here on one of the hinges it's got a little pressure and there we go be careful there is a ribbon cable underneath here so we have to carefully release that and there's our button board removed so now we got the screws that are holding our keyboard down five of them all together We'll remove the screws and flip our keyboard back gently. There's obviously a ribbon cable here also that we'll have to release. And I'm just going to put these screws back for now. So I don't lose them until I put the keyboard back. So there's these other ribbon cables here that you can see that are under the keyboard that, that are attached to the motherboard. We'll go ahead and just release those also at this point. And there's some screws here that are holding the palm rest in place. I'll just go, we'll go ahead and just remove those for the moment. And then there's some small screws here under where the DVD drive was that we pulled out. We'll remove those screws. And once again, we're getting better views now of exactly how our cables are routed coming up through the top side I just kind of move them around and eyeball them and figure out which which hole they go in how they're routed very important because there's just quite a bit of them quite a lot of them on this particular laptop got ones here here's our video cable you see where it's routed uh, just uh, kind of a nightmare for wire management on this particular laptop but we'll go ahead and pull them through once we take note of where they're routed we'll just start to remove them from all of their traces all of their harnesses we'll just take them off remove it there goes the video cable there here comes some of the wireless antennas we'll just remove those pull back the tape and don't worry we'll be 
having to re replace some of this tape uh, when we go to put it back together. Just go ahead and pull it off, pull everything out. We're just trying to get to the point where we can remove the actual screen or the top lid from the laptop. Here's some more coming through. Pull those through. And at this point, I'm going to attempt to just go ahead and remove the top lid. So there's some screws here that are holding down the top lid. The hinges, we'll just remove those. And that should, should pretty much uh, free up our top lid now. So we already have our video cable pulled through, so and we and our antennas are pulled through. So now we can just lift the top lid off, and that's going to make things a little bit easier now to work on. Now this is what I was talking about of how many screws we're starting to get to the to the main bottom shell and there's uh, several screws we have to take out follow me here each one there's another one here another one so and there's one here and I'm telling you there's so many screws that MSI has put into this bottom case there's another one there's another one <laughs> another one it's just on and on it's crazy uh, how many screws they've used to hold this thing down in place here's one over here got to get that one got to get another one over here <laughs> oh and guess what don't let this get you there's one hiding underneath a black tab sticker next to the left speaker look at that there's another one here you'll never know that's there you're wondering what's holding this thing on don't forget about that one now we can peel it back finally we have our touchpad off, our, our palm rest, and now we're just going to remove a couple of screws that hold the motherboard into place. Removing the ribbon cables here that are attached to the board that are exposed. There's another one here we'll get. Let go to some of these daughter boards, we'll remove that. And now we are able to gently pull our motherboard out of out of place don't force anything here just pull it right on out and there we go ready to do our power jack job so here's the power jack here you can see it's all bent bent in a place it just needs to be replaced it's cracked it's moving it's wobbly so we're going to be removing this power jack with hot air so we're going to have to protect all of the components around the feet that we're going to be desoldering and uh, I'll show you the feet here in red that we're going to be concentrating on that's holding the jack right there will protect all of the components around it with heat resistant tape as a precaution we'll put some on that side then we'll come around and put some heat resistant tape on this side And that should just give us a, enough protection to keep from, from blowing off any of our other smaller components. So the technique that I use, I'll actually go ahead and add solder to these feet, fresh solder, and that's going to help, uh, it's going to help transfer the heat to the original solder to um, to remove this jack. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to all of the points here, and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, add our heat. We'll see the flux activate, and we'll slowly heat the board up. And then we'll move in a bit closer and what you'll do is you'll actually start to see the solder move around because it's molten and we'll use our solder sucker here to 
to pull out that molten solder. There's one down nicely. Solder sucker is a great thing used with hot air. I like it. It's a good technique. And here's our second one. Got to have patience. A bit of a steady hand. Keep in mind of the angle of your hot air. You do not want it to go underneath that tape. Notice too uh, how I have aluminum foil underneath the area that I'm heating up because I don't want to actually burn my bench. But we just pull our jack off now and all is good with that. Came off well. Uh, and then now we have our new power jack in place. We'll just put us some fresh solder back on the, the new feet, like so. And then what I'm going to do, as I do with all of my power jet repairs, I will, I will go back and heat these solder points up. Sorry for the blurry picture there. Camera's a bit out of focus. We'll uh, heat these up so we can flow them. So we get rid of any cold solder joints we may have here. Kind of tough to see, but you can see the solder moving around and kind of seeping in and flowing into the into the joints there. So a bit of a blurry picture, but you get the idea. And there we have it. Well, what you want to do now is test to be sure we don't have any shorts going on with the multi with the multimeter everything checks out here and then you want to visually inspect it to be sure that the, the power jack is sitting flush on the motherboard and just to kind of give it a visual inspection to make sure everything looks in order we can then remove the tape Clean up the board. And reinsert the motherboard into the case. So now everything in reverse. Ribbon cables back on. The two screws back on to secure the motherboard in place. The palm rest. We'll get it back into place. Ribbon cables, screws on the top part of the palm rest, our display goes back on. Tighten up our screws on our hinges, get it secured, and we'll begin the meticulous part of rerouting our wires properly, getting them put back into place. Using uh, tape, I use painter's tape for some of this stuff. If, if some of these wires aren't quite going back in their slots that well. But there goes our video cable back into place. Here comes our antenna wires. Get them all back into place. Like I say, having photos of where this is, where the wires are routed, would be a really good idea as you take this laptop apart. Because now we have to put all these wires back in where they were. Just get them settled. Start putting our screw, all of our screws, back into the bottom shell. Get everything all. Tightened up there. So many screws. Okay, now we start putting all of our 
wireless cards back into place, plugging them in, tighten them down, just everything in reverse, the same order. Here comes our video card, it's going back in. Get it into place. Then we start applying a uh, more thermal paste on our processor and get our processor heat sink put into place. We'll put this, we'll tighten it down the same way we did as we took it apart, crisscross. Add some thermal paste to our video card heat sink and get it back into place using the same technique to tighten those screws down crisscross now our heat sink fan tighten it down And now we're going to test. This is a good time to test before we progress further to be sure that we have power and we do. There's our fan spinning. So we'll go ahead and put our keyboard on. Put our screws back in to tighten it. Secure it. Great. Button board, put the ribbon cable back on, snap it back into place. And get our back covers on, it's pretty much the finished job, everyone power it on. And there we have it. Power jack job well done on this MSI GT735 laptop. So I hope my video has helped you. Hey, if you're in need of a power jet repair, please contact me at timscomputerfix.net. That's where you can find me and contact me. Uh, you can ship me your laptop. I will do any power jet repair that's out there. And I hope this video helps someone. Pretty interesting teardown on this MSI laptop. I figured it was worth recording just kind of a different different way this was put put together but I hope it helped somebody and made their job a little easier thanks for watching please rate and subscribe to my feed and until next time everyone see you soon